Hello everyone and welcome to a very special video. Today I'm going to be doing a tier list ranking my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen characters. Uh, I did this a little while back as sort of an impromptu 25 subscriber special with my favorite record of Ragnarok characters and I figured that since I'm going to be doing a lot more Jujutsu Kaisen content soon uh, and since I recently hit 75 subscribers I decided you know what I'm gonna do a tier list for this too so here we are uh, now there are of course some characters missing off of here I've already noticed that Dagon and the youngest of the uh, cursed womb uh, brothers is not on here but I'm just gonna work with what we've got on here so I'm just gonna go from the bottom first uh, as I would say a lot of the people towards the bottom are less prominent, and we've got a lot more important characters towards the top. So first off, we've got the handler guy whose name I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's not Nita. Pretty sure that's another one. And he shows up a few times and doesn't really do too much. So I'm just going to put him in the D tier. You notice how there's not an F tier because I don't think there are any F tier characters on here, except for maybe that bear thing, uh, because it showed up for like two chapters. Uh, oh my god, I forgot her name. Well, that sucks. Anyway, I'm putting her in C tier. She seems pretty cool. Um, we haven't gotten her curse technique yet, but she is a grade one, so she's got to be fairly powerful. Um, and considering her dynamic with Gojo, assuming he gets out of the prison realm, uh, hopefully they'll have more interactions. Now, uh, what was her name? Yuki, I think. The fourth special grade sorcerer. We have not seen too much of her yet. We've seen her twice, I think, um, and we don't know what her technique is yet, but both times she has shown up and she's had a significant impact on both of the characters she's interacted with. The first was Toto, in which she, um, I guess she taught him the whole what type of girl do you like thing. And then the other time was when she met Ghetto, and pretty much inspired Ghetto's whole breaking away from the Jujutsu College. So she's pretty significant despite not having appeared in the present yet. So I'm going to put her at the top of the C tier, uh, and I expect her to rise pretty high uh, by the time she gets more development. Hand guy, or miracle guy, whatever you want to call him. I hate him a lot. I'm very glad that he died. Uh, he was just annoying. Now, Toto. Toto's an easy S tier. Um, Toto is great. Uh, I think the contrast between his big punk uh, tough guy appearance uh, contrasted with his being a idol fanboy and like just the whole the entirety of the goodwill event was escalated it was it was improved as an arc just by Toto being there in his interactions with Yuji. It was so great. He, he was definitely one of the best parts of the arc, and I'm very excited to see Toto again, uh, especially with the way that uh, the Shibuya incident is going. I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing more of Toto and the people on his level more often. Now, Yuji. Yuji. Um, I'll put Yuji at the top of the A tier. I like Yuji a lot, but he hasn't done anything yet that has made me go, holy shit, you are an unbelievably amazing character. Um, I know I make comparisons between Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man a lot, but with like Denji, just the way Denji is written, as feeling like an actual real-life person who's been put in these fucked up situations, um, if we go in a really interesting direction with Yuji, which I feel like we're going into. I feel like with the way the Shibuya arc is going, I'm probably going to end up putting Yuji in S tier very soon, um, with how he deals with the ramifications of Sukuna's fuckery. Uh, I feel like Yuji is definitely going to be making it to the top tier very soon. Mai. Mai is pretty neat, I guess. I mean, she only really showed up during the Goodwill event, and she didn't leave that much of a lasting impression on me. But her, uh, I guess you could say, spite towards Maki is pretty understandable. So, I'll give her that. Uh, Yuta. We haven't seen Yuta since Volume Zero. 
and I'm very much looking forward to seeing him. Uh, since he is a special grade, it'll be fascinating to see how much he's grown in the year since Volume Zero. Um, and once again, with how the Shibuya arc has been going, I have a feeling that we'll probably be seeing him very soon, along with the third year from Jujutsu High. Uh, but, yeah, I think Yuta's pretty neat, uh, especially with the way he interacts with the other members of the now second years. I'm very excited to see him come back for that reason as well. Um, mostly to see his interactions with people like Maki, especially considering uh, what's happened to Maki lately. The bear thing, um, it's a bear thing, I guess. I don't know. I guess it's not a very significant character. It showed up, like, for two chapters when Gojo was training uh, Yuji by watching movies. Gojo. I'd say Gojo's probably solid... Hmm. I would actually probably have to put Jogo in the A tier. Um, that's mostly because he's essentially the, I guess, um, force behind the ideology of the Cursed Spirits. Um, and he's also the most powerful among them. Uh, although this has nothing to do with power ranking again. Um, I don't know. I think uh, it's kind of a funny meme how Jogo gets shit on, even though he's arguably the strongest of the special grades. It's just because the poor bastard keeps getting put up against the tops of the verse. He just couldn't catch a break. Um, but I thought his send-off was fantastic. Uh, his interaction with Hanami and Dagon was really good. And sort of the uh, rapport between him and Suka. I thought that was fantastic. Um, man, we need to start filling up beats here. Well, we're going to do that with Yaga. Yaga's pretty cool, but... He hasn't done too much, but I, I quite like his whole thing with creating uh, cursed corpses and stuff like that. Um, Naibara. Naibara? Yeah, that's his name. Um, he shows up for like two pages in the whole manga. So, I can't really... I'll put him above the bear because he's an actual character. Um, but I'm really not too impressed with him. I know he has more significance now with chapter 120, but that's more stuff with Nanami than it is stuff with him. Uh, Panda. Panda will go probably top of the B tier. I'm very excited to see what happens with Panda and his sister core. Um, I think he's, he's going to definitely be important again somewhat soon. I'm not sure if it'll be in the Shibuya arc, uh, but definitely sometime in the future, especially with the fact that uh, he still has that other core to show. Um, I just think Panda's really n cool. Uh, I think it showed a lot of early creativity with Gay Gay and how they were working within the Jujutsu world, making characters. Uh, having Panda just be a panda, and then actually Panda not being a panda, I think that was really um, interesting. Uh, Nobara. Hmm, where do I put Nobara? I like Nobara a lot. She's probably actually my favorite out of the main three. Um, I would probably put her at S tier. I don't know, I just really like Nobara. Her um, straw doll technique, she uses it in very interesting ways. I think she's exceptionally versatile and useful. Um, but also, it feels like every time she's on screen, she's doing something very cool or entertaining. Uh, such as with her fight with Momo in the Goodwill event, or especially her fight against the brothers in the uh, origi uh, Origin of Obedience. I think that's what the arc was called. You know. She just fucking popped off in that arc. I mean, I, I don't need to explain that to you guys. You know how crazy she was. Uh, Sukuna. Sukuna. Hmm. Do I like Sukuna more than Toto? No. I think Sukuna's extremely entertaining. Like, I think he's, he's really fun. But I feel like Toto connects more with me on a personal level uh just with how uh down to earth his 
flashback was with Yuji, even though it was a fake flashback. Um, I found that to be one of the most compelling parts of his character. Um, Junpei. Junpei only showed up for a while, but I was fairly impressed with his character. It's unfortunate that he got killed by Maido. That fucking guy. Um, but I guess there's really not too much to say about him. His ideology was pretty understandable, considering that he was just bullied all the time. And seeing how Mahito basically ruined his life and then killed him was pretty depressing. And it really is a shame that we never got to see him hang out with the other members of Jujutsu High like there was in that cover page. Um, yeah, pretty sad. Momo! Momo has not done very much. So I'm going to put her in the C tier. Um, her stuff about the standards for women in the Jujutsu world are pretty interesting. It's always fairly fascinating to me to hear about, like, the social dynamics within these fictional settings when you have to consider, like, all of these weird powers and shit, and, um, uh, I guess it's just, like, part- it's- it's like with, um, My Hero, the way that quirks affect society, I guess. Uh, I just find that stuff very interesting, and Momo's pretty much given us our only significant insight into that. Uh, Mahito. Mahito... I feel like I hate Mahito more than I like Toto. And that's a very good thing. You see, Mahito is my most despised character in the entire series, and I have to put him at S tier for that. Because he's very well written, and Gege did a fantastic job at making me absolutely hate his guts. Uh, he definitely has a lot of potential. I'm looking forward to him as Yuji's arch nemesis, basically. Um, and we'll see what he does in the future. I don't think he's going to die in the Shibuya incident. I think he's going to stick around for a while because he is going to be, he, he's definitely the leader of the Cursed Spirits. I feel like Imposter Ghetto is only working with the Cursed Spirits as a means to an end. It's very possible that after this arc, they're going to split off and I'll do their own thing. Um, oh god, was his, his name Eno or something? He's pretty neat. I find his, his dynamic with Nanami to be pretty compelling. But, unfortunately, he hasn't shown up too often. And the most recent time he was relevant, he got his ass handed to him by uh, resurrected Toji. Though you really can't blame him for it, because, you know, it's Toji. Now, the middle brother. I can't remember his name. His design, I hate it a lot, and his curse technique is pretty meh, but we did get some surprising emotional appeal out of him, so I'll probably put him above my Real Ghetto. Hmm. I'm taking Volume Zero Ghetto into consideration. He, he'll probably be an S tier. His ideology is pretty compelling, and with the way that he comes to have that ideology, as we see in the Hidden Inventory arc, is very interesting. It's very unfortunate that Ghetto got killed and then had his body taken over by that weird brain thing. Uh, we're probably not going to see him again. I know we got a little bit of teasing of it with uh, Gojo getting Imposter Ghetto to choke himself because, you know, the soul and the body are one. Um, but I have a feeling that may have just been like a... Um, it's like a false hope, I guess. I don't know. Mechamaru. Mechamaru is an A-tier. Him being able to control what are essentially robots was really cool and un uh, uh, unexpected. His fight with Panda during the Goodwill incident, or not the Goodwill incident, the Goodwill event, was one of the best ones of that arc. Um, and boy... Boy, oh boy, did he throw me for a loop when he pulled a fucking Ava out of nowhere and fought Mahito. That was insane. Uh, so I have to put him up there just for that. Um, I also think that his desire to go and be with the other Kyoto students, especially Miwa, I found that pretty compelling. And that's why I felt really bad when that fuck Mahito killed him. Um, so yeah, that's... That's Mechamaru, I guess. I can't remember his human name. I think they, they say it like once or twice. I'm just gonna call him Mechamaru forever. Gojo! Do I need to explain it? Do I really need to explain where Gojo goes? I mean, he's Gojo. Hanami. I think Hanami... 
probably has the best design of all the high grades or special grades. I'm really just gonna switch between them uh, whenever I forget. Hanami, Hanami is a B tier. His whole uh, environmentalist thing. Would it, Hanami be an eco-fascist? I'm not sure. Maybe an Anprim. Um, his whole, oh yeah, guys, you know, can't have you humans around anymore for the sake of the earth. I'm like, yeah, you know, that's fair. Uh, unfortunately, he's probably one of the weaker of the special grades. And I'm quite disappointed we never actually got to see his domain expansion. Like, we almost got it in the Goodwill event. And then Goju came in and cock-blocked him. Though I guess it's also fortunate that we didn't see it, because then it's possible that Toto would have died. So, you win some, you lose some. Coat hanger guy. He showed up just for the Goodwill event, and then got all of his limbs crushed by Gojo? Nah. The principal of the Kyoto High. He's pretty neat, I guess. He definitely threw me for a loop when this old man that looks like... Captain Yamamoto, but with record of Ragnarok Zeus face, threw off his uh, kimono or whatever, and he, he was dressed up as a 80s rock musician. Man, I did not see that shit coming. Uh, Miwa. Miwa has only shown up a few times, but I, I'm always a sucker for the, oh, I'm just doing this really dangerous shit for money thing. It's why I find Uraraka pretty neat, and it's why Kobeni is a really funny character in Chainsaw Man. Um, but Miwa hasn't gotten too much screen time as of yet, uh, and I guess her relationship with Mechamaru kind of puts her up a couple notches. But until we see more from her, she's probably like a solid B tier. Mei Mei. Mei Mei. Mei Mei's an A tier. It's basically the money thing with Miwa taken to an extreme. Um, and also, she's really hot. Do I need to explain that to you? And I guess her axe is really cool, and the way that she makes use of her pretty useless technique is actually pretty fascinating. Kusakabe. Uh, unfortunately for Kusakabe, we haven't seen too much of him yet, but I dig the whole cowardly swordsman thing. So I'll put him at the bottom of B tier for now. Mustache man. Fuck you. Maki. Uh, Maki is an easy S tier. Living in a world full of cursed spirits and cursed techniques, and just being really strong and being as proficient as you are with just having physical strength is really impressive. And I'm definitely rooting for her when it comes to sticking it to the Zenin clan. Those guys are assholes. Nanami. Ah, oh, the king. Nanami is at the top of this list. Without question. Can I can I move Gojo, please? Come on, guys. There we go. Um, yeah. I'm going to be doing some videos talking about various characters in Jujutsu. And I'm going to be doing Nanami as the first one. I'll probably have that out in like the next week or whatever, depending on how much time I have. But yeah, Nanami is fantastic. If I could get into it a little bit here... I feel like Nanami is probably one of the most down-to-earth and relatable of the characters in this series for a multitude of reasons, um, which I'll get into in my own video. But safe to say that Nanami is probably the best character in Jujutsu. Uh, Toge. Toge has a very cool technique. He was probably one of the standouts to me from Volume Zero. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't seen him do that much since the Goodwill event. Uh, so hopefully he survives Shibuya, and we'll get to see more of him. Megumi. Megumi's a pretty interesting guy. With the reveal of Maharaga in chapter... Was it 116? One of those, I guess. I don't remember what chapter they revealed Maharaga in. Oh, whatever. Um, it was 170. Right. Um... And just seeing Megumi's growth has been pretty interesting. Uh, Megumi has probably... Probably undergone just as much, if not more, growth as both a character and as a sorcerer as Yuji. Which is pretty good. Chozo. Chozo is very interesting. 
I'll probably put him above Jogo. Because I find his design cooler. Um, the blood technique is awesome. He had probably the best fight in the series against Yuji. And I'm very interested to see where his character goes now that he had this whole fake flashback thing like Toto did. He certainly seems to be messed up over it. But I'm very interested in seeing where he goes. Imposter Ghetto. Hmm. Unfortunately, we haven't really seen enough of Imposter Ghetto for me to have like a final, like, yes, this is where they will go on the chart. Because they've mostly just been orchestrating things from the sidelines. I assume we're going to be learning a lot more about them soon with their fight with Mei Mei, assuming that that doesn't just happen off screen, uh, learning who they actually are, um, and what exactly their motivations are. Until we have that, I can't really put them any higher than this, like the middle of the A tier, because they're very impressive, I must say, with all of their planning and stuff. Uh, you know, managing to seal Gojo. Uh, we'll, we'll see where Imposter Ghetto goes. Naobito. Naobito is a surprising character and that I didn't expect very much from him at all. Like, I figured he'd be pretty strong as the head of the Zenin family, but I didn't think he would be very interesting. And boy, was I wrong. Man, his technique confused me for the longest time until rereading Jujutsu. Um, and it's very cool. I really dig his technique. And also, him fighting Dagon after losing his arm and just being like, Alright, you're an asshole for taking that arm, even if it was super old. Now Beto's stocks went way the fuck up after that chapter. Uh, so he's around there. Camo. Camo? Uh, he's very interesting. Uh, as the future head of one of the big three clans, I feel like he has a... A lot of potential as a character for more development, assuming we'll see him again. Um, and I just find the whole thing with him and the relation to his clan and how his mother basically being like a concubine affected that. Um, hopefully we'll see more of him, but since he really only was relevant during the Goodwill event, there's not too much more I can say about him. Toji. Oh my god, do I like Toji or Gojo more? Hmm, I think I like Gojo more. Again, Toji's another one of those where it's like, do I really have to explain it? Uh, Toji is probably the biggest badass in the verse without being the most powerful, simply because his physical abilities don't even require him to use a technique. Weapons master characters are always really cool to me, especially when they're working in a world where everyone has magic abilities and they're just like, yeah, I just kind of neg that by being really good. Uh, and his whole thing towards the end of his fight with Gojo, and his second death, really making him more nuanced as a character with his relation to Megumi, I think that makes him very interesting. Uh, so yeah, he's definitely an easy S tier. And finally, Rico. I will put Rico... Rico? God, I made her sound like a dude for a second. Rico. I will put her above... Kamo, and just behind Panda. So, her whole interaction with Gojo and friends during the Hidden Inventory arc was really good. Like, them just going around and her, ex like, experiencing life, which I guess was something that she never really got to do because of her nature as a Star Plasma vessel. Um, oh, it all made that all the more tragic when she gets killed by Toji. Um, and you just can't help but feel really bad for her. Uh, but unfortunately, because she only appeared during that arc, you can't really say too much more about her. I, I guess her effect on the development of both Gojo and Ghetto into becoming the people that they are, or were in Ghetto's case, is pretty major, and you can't really understate it. So she's pretty important in that respect. Uh, but yeah, I guess that is my complete tier list of Jujutsu Kaisen characters. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I do Jujutsu Kaisen reviews every week, and as I mentioned earlier, I will be doing a series talking about the various characters from Jujutsu Kaisen, starting off with Nanami. So if you're interested, subscribe so you don't miss it, and I guess look forward to that. 
Uh, if you enjoy discussing Jujutsu Kaisen with other people, or you enjoy the content I produce on this channel, please check out my Discord. I'll have a link in the description below. If you enjoy other series such as Record of Ragnarok, Chainsaw Man, Kangen Omega, and Bleach, I do videos on those series as well. So if you're interested, please check out my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.